Hello, my name is Zizi Ansel, and I run an adult education program in Holyoke, Massachusetts. People don't know what adult education is. We know about people who drop out of high school, but we don't understand what happens to those people after they drop out. What happens is they often come back to the classroom. That's the field of adult education. Our students come back because they want to change their lives. Imagine the bravery it takes to pick up the phone and admit that you're 35 years old and you can't spell or multiply. To admit that you need help is huge. For me, it's beyond comprehension. One quarter of the population of Holyoke has less than a fifth grade education. Holyoke's dropout rate is 52%. Poverty. Low self-esteem. Our students want to be in school. Learning disabilities. They want to better themselves. They want to pull themselves out of poverty. And they want what we have. No role models. Access to education Neglect. and to their own dreams. Gangs, unemployment. Our students are not stupid. Violence. They lack skills. Our students are not lazy. Fear. They're overcoming years of Abandonment. obstacles and failures in a broken system. Physical disabilities. I'll tell you what adult education Incarceration. is. It's little known and underfunded. Losing family. But it's full of excited and inspired Abuse. teachers and learners who want no to car. be in school. Oh my God. Okay. Shame. Having a father who walked away and never looked back. I never had someone in my corner where a parent should be. Growing up with no parents, no family support. Getting pregnant and having to explain it to your parents. I should have listened to my parents. I wish I could die sometimes and come back and do it all over again. Being left alone. Nobody cared about me. I couldn't get an education. I had to learn how to get a job all by myself. Seeing my husband, my, my father, and my sister pass away. In spite of these obstacles, our students are yearning to learn. In the chaos and strain of their adult lives, they're making it to class. Our adult learners inspire us and give meaning to our teachers, tutors, and community members. What keeps blowing my mind is the courage it takes to return to school. It's a giant leap of faith. Over the years, I have been saying to myself that I needed to get my high school equivalency, my GED. I have been to other programs. I tried all of them, but really nothing worked. I couldn't seem to finish. I'm tired of jumping from program to program. If I sign up for the GED, I want to be able to triumph. Since I was so determined, I called Perfect, knowing that it's a life-changing decision. I was told that there's a wait list. I was like, great. Another program telling me that I need to wait. That's what I've been doing is waiting. But there's always hope. I was skeptical. I didn't want to be negative, but there's always that voice in the back of your head telling you to be negative. As I got to class, everything that I pictured to be was totally different. It was an actual classroom setting where there's actual teachers and tutors. People have to be there on time, not be late. And after three absences, you're out. I love the fact that it's like that. I've been wasting time, and finally, I'm committed to giving it my all. That was all back in September. I just got my GED. I did it. I promised myself if I get called and accepted into the Adult Learning Center, 
I would give it my all. I would get my GED and lead by example. That's what I'm doing. I won't let myself down. It's time for a change for the best in my life. Knowing that there was a waiting list, I will be honest, it put an anchor on my hopes. But when I spoke to Zizi, I started to get my hopes out from doubt. Now I'm here and I'm moving forward and I won't stop till I get my GED. When I try reading, I have to have silence because silence helps my train of thought to stay on track. When I try to read, I want everything to be quiet, no distractions. What I'm going to learn, first I make sure that the house is clean, has to be immaculate. <laughs> Low music. Is my hair washed? With candles. <laughs> Without interruptions, no chatter in the background. And a fresh, clean house. <laughs> I like my room to smell like lavender. Sometimes things pop up, like the phone rings or someone knocks on the door. Everywhere is quiet, but my neighbor makes a noise like... When I start to get stressed again, I just leave it alone. I make a drink of pineapple and Malibu on ice and take a few sips. I'm done with that. <laughs> I used to get mixed up. Again, I lose my concentration. I have to go back and read in the beginning of my whole sentence. Ugh, I'm reading too fast. I have to go back and read again. Students talking, teacher trying to explain. I'm trying to get classwork done before class is over. Oh, I'm getting a little mad now. I give up. I go to the kitchen and I try again. Now there's some annoying tapping of a pen on the desk. I'm about <coughs> to give up on this classwork. I reach into my coat, earphones on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they still make noise, like a chair move. <laughs> Teacher explaining, students talking, hands tapping like crazy, earphones are on, music is playing, and now finish my classwork. Now that's how it's done. <laughs> There's so much negative energy around me. I try to shrug it off, close my eyes, and take some deep breaths. Then I open my eyes. It's very important that I take time out for myself. Yeah. I like writing class because it's fun to learn how to write. They taught me how to brainstorm ideas, and I want to find confidence in my writing. It's a way of expressing my feelings. My goal is to be a writer, to write a book. That's where I want to learn how to write well. So I can write about good memories. And about what life is about. I wonder if I will have a good life. Mm -hmm. So the thing that always inspired me is being a forensic pathologist. It's the main reason why I want to get my GED. I really look forward to getting to the medical field. There used to be this show called the Dr. G Medical Examiner, and I used to watch her a lot. It was every Wednesday late at night. I'd be in my living room in my pajamas, wrapped in my blanket. I like her because even though it was her job, she always felt bad for the victims and their circumstances.
When I was a boy, I wanted to be a police officer. I told my parents and they laughed. When I was a little older, I told my parents that I wanted to be a lawyer and they laughed some more. So when I thought that I wanted to be a doctor, I decided not to tell my parents. <laughs> As the years passed, I realized I didn't want to be a doctor anymore. In fact, it wasn't just that I didn't want to be a doctor, but that I didn't believe that I could be one. My immediate family were not the only ones who failed to believe in me. Everyone in my community was complicit. My neighbors, my teachers, and oftentimes, my friends. The world I lived in came with a default achievement cap. According to everyone I knew, my life was as good as it could ever be. And yet I could never shake the feeling that my life was supposed to be better. I thought of this question, if the tree falls in the forest and no one is there to hear it, does it make a sound? Well, if a child has a dream and there's no one there who believes in it, does the dream die? I learned the answer to that question when I met the director of the Holyoke Community College Adult Learning Center by chance at a gas station. <laughs> in a program, I found students who had experienced the same kind of life that I did, and many much worse. They had suffered disappointments and traumatic experiences that very few people here could ever imagine, or imagine what those experiences can do to the human spirit, to your sense of self. And yet they were in class every Tuesday and Thursday. I asked myself, why are they here? Their answer is my answer. They, like me, found someone who believes in their dreams. Contrary to what most people think about underprivileged people, those with substandard education, those who are at the those who are part of the cycle of mediocrity, those people we see on the bus or walking, dragging baby carriages with babies in tow or just released from prison, they're not empty inside. They're not content with the lives they have. They want more. They dream of more. They arrive for class with their hearts cupped in their hands, offering them to teachers, counselors, and tutors. They believe, in spite of everything you've been told, that it's still possible you can accomplish something meaningful. Adult education is the place where students find the balance between their world and their possibilities. Even as a tutor in the program, I achieved that balance. When I arrived there, I had nothing. I was naked and empty with a fire inside that was all but extinguished by my own reckless behaviors and what was supposed to be my reality. But everyone there gave me something, a smile, advice, encouragement. Slowly, I began to pick up the pieces. That fire inside just lit up. I'm a GED graduate, a community college transfer, a student at Amherst College. Today, my future is brighter than at any other point in my life. I feel not only that I'm destined to do great things, but also that I'm on the path where anything is possible. What this means is that the adult education serves a much bigger purpose. It's not just about preparation for the GED, the high school equivalency test. That is secondary to what it really provides. It provides its students with the ability to dream again. Dreams do not die, and no adult learner stops believing in a better future. Go ahead to your I feel inspired when I listen to music, especially the blues. When I am sad, it keeps the negative thoughts out make me feel differently and feel stronger. 
Life is a struggle. I live day by day. You have to remember to keep your faith. To keep moving on. When someone tries to step on you, when you feel like you're being crushed, just bounce back better than, stronger than ever. These people you see on the bus or walking with babies in tow or just released from prison, they're not empty inside. They're not content with the lives they have. They want more, they dream of more. I think the whole world will be impressed to know that I'm deaf and capable of advancing my education. I can do it no matter what. You know, Jackie doesn't know that she's a hot coal. You know how when you put a hot coal in with the cold ones, the other ones get hot? I believe in myself that I can pass my GED and nothing can stop me from accomplishing my goals. I was stuck on dumb, now here I am and learning. Our students come back to school. They want to be there. They want to change their lives. We're not using our lives as an excuse. We come here, and we want to be here, and we want to be successful. I am very passionate, a fighter, driven. I am a person with a dream. I am proud of myself, I want, and I want my children to be proud of me, to know that I can do it, and to look, to, to look up to me as a role model. Our students want to better themselves, pull themselves out of poverty. They want what we have, access to education and to their own dreams. Dreams do not die. Don't stop believing in a better future. If my friends who dropped out of school hear me and see this, it might encourage them to go back to school. I think that would be great. I want to bring the message that it's never too late to learn and change. We can challenge the system. I am a person with a dream.